It's after. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Emma. I always host the SciStory Live uh, shows every week, and we're here on a Thursday, which is weird and different. Uh, but we're also here like live with people, which is going to be kind of crazy. We're already having way too much fun <laughs> six minutes after our start point. So um, we are at the uh, Citizen Science Association Conference at CSI 2023, and I brought someone to explain what on earth this is before we actually talk to some people who are here to present their posters and their research. So take it away, my friend. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Okay, cool. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Allison Kaywood, and I am part of the program committee for the CSI 2023, 2023 conference. So this is really just an opportunity for people who are involved in all kinds of participatory science things. So citizen, citizen science, community science, environmental justice work. So people who are volunteering with that work, scientists who are part of that work, project managers who run those programs to all be in the same space and to share best practices, to share lessons learned, to get excited about some of the amazing things that my colleagues are doing and some of the really cool work that is happening all over the world um, by engaging volunteers in science in so many really fun and interesting ways. Thank you so that much. Yeah, that is a great description. You are free because this is the most rapid fire like interview running around type of thing. Thank you, Allison. I appreciate it. If you have questions about CSI 2023 or anything regarding that, you can send it in the Facebook comments or via the chat if that's a thing still this time around um, and we'll get to them as soon as we can but we're going to talk to a bunch of different people it's gonna be awesome and we're starting with my new friend who i met um, <laughs> do you want to introduce yourself thank you so much allison introduce yourself and tell us what you study and then we might do more questions after that but all right, we're going to do this cute little pass of the tiny microphone okay Hi everyone, my name is Kat Ko. I'm a biologist with the National Park Service um, and I help coordinate the Dragonfly Mercury Project. Cool. So what is this Dragon Merc Mercury, Dragonfly, did I say that wrong? Dragonfly, how about just dragons? <laughs> Dragonfly Mercury Project work, like what are you actually trying to find? Yeah, um, so it's called the Dragonfly Mercury Project. Um, we engage volunteers in the collection of dragonfly larvae, often in national parks um, and other places. Um, and we work with USGS to analyze it for mercury contamination. Have you gotten any results recently? Yeah, actually, if you Google Dragonfly Mercury Project, um, all our data are publicly available. And that's part of, you know, having the folks who help us collect the data see um, the fruits of their labor, so to speak. Um, and we have a data dashboard. You can see to date, like over 140 parts, I think, over like a decade I participated. Um, and you can see everywhere from Alaska, Hawaii, Florida, Maine, um, different mercury concentrations and what that means. Cool. All right, I want to know how on earth you got into this. So was it a dragonfly thing? Was it a mercury thing? Was it a dragons and therefore dragonfly was close enough type of thing? Or yeah. how did you get here? <laughs> kind of a close enough scenario. So I studied <laughs> ecology um, and I started out my first job as like a naturalist, teaching kids, taking them on hikes and stuff. So um, citizen science and working with people and nature is really important to me. Um, I'm part of the air resources division of the park service. So I don't work actually at a park and not a lot of people know there's like other divisions and levels to that. Um, I didn't study air, but it's really cool to see the connection between like dragonfly larva, cool animals, taking people outside, getting that like place-based experience in parks and then seeing how that connects to like air pollution and issues of mercury and things like that. That's, that's, yeah. I'm very excited. I'm going to be looking that up. And then if it's not on SciStarter, you will be hearing from me. So we can put it on SciStarter. <laughs> Thank you so much. I know you, is it, did we get in time? Yeah. Yes. And then she has a meeting in like three seconds to get to a different one. So thank you so much. Hey, all right. Now here's the weird part where I'm going to travel with this stand. And we're going to go to more people and say hello to them. Now we're in a busy-ish location. And so, well, actually, let me give you a good view if you haven't already seen. So lots of people, I'm gonna go and harass some of them and it's gonna be interesting. Who, do, who to harass first? Do you wanna be harassed? Okay. I don't know, what are you doing here? This is Laura. Uh, hi there, I'm Laura with the Association of Science and Technology Centers. I'm here soaking up all of the creative ideas that people are sharing via their posters and hearing about the different conceptions of community science, citizen science, participatory science. And yeah, I'm definitely asking people a lot of questions around how they define community and build relationships. So it's been very stimulating. Any particular posters that you've seen that are like, whoa, this is so cool. I want to show everyone. Oh, that I couldn't name one. That would be way too hard. Okay. <laughs> Well, I 
did set up one friend to be able to talk to me and I'm trying to see if I can find them quickly, but this is harder than I thought. So what do you, what do you suggest? Should we walk a, I'm, I'm just adding you into the team here and making you, you walk go. with me potentially. Um, I say go to that corner near Tom Harwell down in the corner. Um, and I think you'll be able to capture okay. the flow of some people. Are you, you're just I don't know Tom. <laughs> he's, he's the bald man. The bald man. Mm-hmm. Oh, Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I think and he's got some people corner, in that corner to capture the flow of people. You're trying to get like an interview on the street kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I feel I like think. that one guy from that one night show. What is? Or no, the guy from. Uh, no, this is. Oh yeah, and here we are. <laughs> this is so weird. Yeah, we're doing the the double just to make sure that we catch everything that's happening. Oh, here's our table. Sci starter. Hey, sci starter friends. <laughs> this is like a multi-camera experience happening that's pretty wild <laughs> uh darlene do you want to introduce yourself actually live <laughs> hello hello i'm darlene cavalier from arizona state university and SciStarter. thanks for joining us here at the citizen science association conference oh. kevin what do you do hi i'm kevin ripka i do some design i'm a graphic designer with SciStarter. awesome <laughs> Lydia, hello. I'm Lydia. I'm a PhD student, and I just help consult in whatever they need me to do. Everything. <laughs> everything. I don't know if that was actually like hearable, but that's okay. All right, I'm gonna travel to some of my friends that I met the other day. Um, some that you've actually kind of met before. Hey, Emma. Hey, do you mind being on live? A thing. You don't mind. Awesome. Hi. <laughs> So for anyone who has seen a bunch of Sizer Live episodes, uh, Emma Oshrin, Oshrin is like, Oshrin, dang, I was so close. Um, Oshrin works with the Budverse team. So you've actually met two of them, Taryn and uh, Sarah before. And now we have a third member. So they're ho- all of them are here, which is crazy and awesome. What do you do for the Budverse team? So I'm the Budverse director. And so I lead our team who you've met, Sarah and Tara and the three of us, we do Budverse together and we lead activities with community organizations, with schools, with nature centers. It's a project you can participate in all across the country and internationally. And we're based in Chicago. What are you presenting this time around? So I'm presenting one of our research projects. We have, I'll come closer, yeah. <laughs> We have three research projects that are running right now. We have our project focused on plant phenology, which is just plant seasonal change. That's the project that's been going on since Bud first started in 2007. So if you notice plants blooming in the springtime or leaves changing in the fall, that's all that phenology is. So anybody can participate in that project on any plant across the country and internationally. That's our main project. Then we have another project focused on flowering plants and pollinators. So if you're interested in pollinators, you can again just go to any flowering plant outside and watch for pollinator visitation. That's another great project of ours. This is our third project focused on milkweed plants and monarch butterflies. So if you've ever seen monarch butterflies flying around, they come through Mexico, the US and Canada on this long 3000 mile journey. And along their route, they're looking for milkweed plants. Mm -hmm. So to participate in this project, you just need to find any species of milkweed plant and then look for monarch eggs and caterpillars. And you send us a count of those caterpillars and eggs that you find on your plants. And that's how we're able to understand what is the right kind of habitat to to support monarch butterflies and caterpillars so we can help those populations continue on into the future. That's awesome. I'm so glad you're here with this one specifically. As I've, I might have mentioned in previous episodes of this thing, but I studied caterpillars for two weeks and now count myself as a lepidopterologist in training. Caterpillars are super cool. I prefer them to the monarchs themselves, but only because they're just food tubes. They're great. They're fabulous. Um, thank you so much. I'm going to do another. This is like the most rapid yeah, fun absolutely. thing ever. It's going to be fun. Oh, wait, let me. Where am I going next? Where should I go next, humans? Um, if anyone's even on, I don't actually know. All right, let's walk. Thank you, Emma. And she shares my name. How cool is that? <laughs> All right, so now we're walking around. I don't see Roland anymore, so he might be following me somewhere. Let's see. Yeah. Da, da, da. Where am I going? Hi, <laughs> how's it going? <laughs> Good. Do you want to be on a live webinar? You already are on one. Oops, oops. Hi. Hi. <laughs> What's your name? What are you doing here? My name's Gabby Kinney. I work for a small nonprofit called Wetlands Watch, and I run a citizen science program 
um, in the Hampton Roads area to allow citizens to map sea level rise and flooding. Awesome. Yeah. Why are you in that thing, uh, <laughs> that program? That's a great question. Um, I did environmental education for a little while um, with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and I have a background in marine bio, so I was really um, kind of connected with coastal communities and their unique risk in climate change, and so kind of working with youth and citizen groups like Master Naturalists, Master Gardeners, that kind of thing, friends of the watershed that we're near, friends of the Rappahannock, um, friends of the James, that sort of thing, um, and just getting people involved in the climate issue and getting them getting them to feel like they're part of the solution. Awesome. I love that. What's been your favorite part of this conference so far? Ooh, that's a good question, too. Um, I really like the formats. There's like tons of different formats of the sessions so far. Like there are some where you're just kind of listening and learning and then the really interactive discussion based um, sessions have been really great to kind of get more of an in-depth kind of small group discussion going on with some of the presenters. So I really like that opportunity to not only have the chance to just kind of sit back and learn, but also engage. I think that's really cool. And then the networking of course is really awesome too. Yeah. You would not believe the amount of like very, I mean, you could believe it. We're all very kind humans, I think. Uh, but it's really fun to be in an environment where everyone here is all about the community focus because oh, it's yeah. a community and citizen science and neighborhood science, et cetera thing. And so it's fun to meet everyone who's just got a similar vibe of like, yeah, let's get everyone yes. involved. That's the biggest let's part is like, I had no idea how much citizen science was going on. Like, I feel like I'm maybe one of the few programs in my Hampton Roads area in Virginia. And so to come out here and actually see so much stuff going on is really, really cool. And kind of getting tips and tricks. And I didn't hear about field scope or size starter before I came here. And now I'm going to go home and tell my tell my uh, coworkers about it and get our project uploaded. And that kind yes. of thing, so. If you wanted to upload it before you leave, we could help you do that. OK, cool. <laughs> Great. Uh, any suggestions for who I should bother next? Ooh, good question, good question. Um, I'm making everyone else do my work for me. <laughs> um, I know I was I supposed know. to meet with someone who studies, not dolphins. Wait, dolphins? <gasps> do they study dolphins? To tag, like poster presenters too? Does yes, that is Ooh. precisely, yeah. Because then we have like a, a thing, right? What time is it? <laughs> cool, we're good on time, this is great. Uh, I'm saying yeah. it's funny because I walked through here briefly and I was like, oh, this all looks great. And then I forgot everything that I saw because there's so much. There's I a really cool corner mm -hmm. over here with the undergraduate research that I thought was really Ooh, neat. Ooh, undergrads. Had, like, integrating it to an education scope. So I really like that. So I would. We will do a switch around going backwards yeah. then. Do, can you point me in the right direction? So back that way. front right corner over here. There's a couple undergraduate research. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kelly. <laughs> Bye. Right. This is such a wild event. So many fun people here. Let's see. La -di -da -di -da. Ooh, are they undergrads? Are they undergrads? Let's see. Raptor nest. Like Velociraptor? Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> I'm gonna stop talking about drugs while the mic's on. Oh gosh, I didn't know I didn't catch it, so I don't think it, it caught it. Did you hear someone say the word drugs? No. <laughs> I didn't. I, it's science, it's fine. Um, I just showed myself in here with a live webinar happening. Would any of you like to explain poster or what you're doing? You don't have to. You look like one of my friends from high school, like way back in the day. I'm sorry, that's totally random, but just FYI. Yeah, anyway, yeah. you can? Yay, okay. Yay. Yay, you're like, thank goodness, not me. Yes, okay. Amazing. All right, my name is Emma, by the way, so you know who's harassing you and you can leave a message to be like, please don't let her back in the building. Hi there, SciStarter rep. We're doing a lot of interviews for SciStarter Live, which is a webinar, and we wanna know what on earth we're here for. So can you introduce yourself and what your project is, and then I'll ask you some random questions. Okay, sounds oh. good. Um, okay. It's so tiny, it's so little. Um, yeah, so I'm Taylor Tewksbury. I'm a recent grad student from the University of Montana. Um, I was studying this, uh, like relationships with place and motivations within folks that work in this long running citizen science or community based monitoring program um, with the Loon Preservation Committee outside of Moultonboro, New Hampshire. Um, so I was just looking at how, you know, relationships with place or how they bond with place um, might vary amongst different subgroups within that volunteer uh, group. And then also what some of their motivations are um, to start their involvement and then stay involved over like decades. Okay, very cool. Uh, have you learned anything recently that has impacted your version of participating in stuff, generally speaking? 
as a as a uh, volunteer or anything related to this? Um, I think just um, having a greater appreciation for the personal connections folks will have with an individual loom or an individual site, um, and the you know childhood stories that go into it, even like anthropomorph anthropomorphized images that they have or the behaviors that they put onto um, different species, and like the value that comes from those stories um, is something that's impacted how I approach the work. Awesome. So this was a graduate school thing, right? Okay, so are you going to continue on into more of this stuff when you are, are you going to be a researcher? Are you going to PhD? What's the, what's the plan? I'm making you decide right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, <laughs> such a tiny light. I know, it's so cute. <laughs> yeah, so I'm walking into a, I'm starting a, a new job. Uh, in a couple of days uh, in the nonprofit sector, working with uh, private landowners um, in everything from like watershed work to um, carnivore conflict within like the education program. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're learning some very interesting things about very different people. You would not believe the difference between every, every poster we've looked at. Anything you want to tell people who are new to citizen science or new to anything related to science related fun stuff that helped you maybe in the past that you want to make sure people understand for their futures. <laughs> you are responsible for their future dreams. <laughs> um, that just your local connections to place or that knowledge that you might have collected from like recording notes in a notebook or just things that you've seen or noticed like have value and can contribute to say a new nest site on a lake that hasn't hatched a chick in 20 years and now is hatching chicks and that like that knowledge is valuable. So, a uh, fun example is that of that is how I used to go in my backyard and eat plants from the ground because I was that kid. Anyway, moving on. Thank you so much for letting me do this. Would you like to interview as well? Sure. I don't have a presentation. You don't, but a couple of people didn't actually. I talked to someone about dragonflies. It's not because they liked dragons. Okay. That much we know. I do love dragons. That's great too. I wonder if I should. Here, do you want to stand in front of this? Sure. Your shirt will meld in. We're meeting another person at the easiest location possible to just turn in sideways. Are you sure you don't want to participate? <laughs> awesome. Okay, first of all, who are you and what do you do? Uh, my name is Grayson Benning and I'm a volunteer program biologist for Florida Fish and Wildlife. Awesome. So are you going to start working with Caroline now? Who's Caroline? The person you met yesterday or two days. Wait, when did she? She's the other side. Sorry, a person who's like living in Florida and does a lot of stuff. Yes, and, yes, yeah. yes. Okay, you yes. Yeah. <laughs> Proof. <laughs> uh, okay, so. It's on the record now. <laughs> It's on the record. That was why I asked that. Uh, do you, or what was my question? Oh, no. Oh, um, so your work in Florida, why is it in Florida? Is that where you grew up? Or like, what do you care about in Florida that's so important? Uh, so after uh, high school, I wanted to be a marine biologist and I was in Michigan and there are very few dolphins in Michigan. And Aww. so decided to uh, move down to Florida uh, and then ended up getting connected after college to uh, FWC and now do a lot of terrestrial biology uh, and citizen science work here. Gotcha. Okay, so what's the goal of this conference for you? Did you do a poster or anything about that stuff, or how are you utilizing this wonderful space? No, so I'm here just to kind of sponge everything in, uh, learn as much as I can. Uh, we use a bunch of, of volunteers, and uh, as a state organization, engaging with the community is a really, really important part of what we do. Uh, and so being able to see genuine science that is grown from communities uh, is important. I think sometimes we have this idea, uh, at least in in uh, state agencies that like science comes from the top down. Um, that's kind of the old way of thinking. Uh, and so for us to be able to come here and see successful science that comes from the ground up uh, is, is important. Totally. We're breaking the, uh, of the norms, the norms of what science usually looks like. And you're a part of that too, for being in this webinar thing, probably. Absolutely. Thank you so much for chatting with me. I'm moving on to the next rapidly and awkward like conversation. Woo. All right, let's go. All right. Who should I talk to next? Who is ready to be bothered by a person? Let's see. Hmm. Citizen science in Peru. Interesting. I'll come back. They're talking to someone. Where should we go next? Oh, no. <laughs> what? Behind me? Oh, really? Where? Why can't I see Mari? Oh, what? Uh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Sorry, if anyone remembers Maria Day, she was the Globe Clouds person. She is here with us. She's having a conversation that's not potentially about 
poster session. So I'm a little, this feels like I'm on a news station. Okay. Anyway, uh, so we're going to walk around and see if we can insert ourselves into that conversation by going this way and sneaking up on her. Like, I feel like I'm like doing a nature documentary. Hello. Are you a part of a poster session? Hey, do you want to talk to some people? Like, it's like 11 people or something online about uh, what you do. Oh, awesome. Perfect. Amazing. Okay. So uh, my name is Emma, by the way, we're live on Zoom slash Facebook about, uh, we do this every week for different projects. And so since we're here, we're like, hey, let's look at all the posters. I'm going to do a quick sneak around so that I can look at the poster as a whole. Sorry, beware. Got your lovely hair in the background of that for a minute. And I think that'll make it better. Okay. Awesome. Do you want to come in front of your poster? So uh, I'm going to hand the little tiny baby mic over to you so that you can explain who you are and why you're here. Yeah. Okay. There we go. I'm Claire O'Neill. I'm uh, the founder of Earth Rise Aware, and I'm also the director of uh, the Biodiversity and Climate uh, Participatory Science Program. And here what we are presenting is a part one of uh, our project, which is focused on one of the forests, urban forests, in the Middlesex County. This is called the Middlesex Fells Reservation. And this is about 2,800 acres of land, right? Which is really very used by the community in the Boston urban area, right? So just so that you know what we do, we study biodiversity. So we count birds, we count insects, we look at their activities, their phenology, their association with their plants. We look at vernal pool. So we look at amphibians as well. And by the way, in mid-February, what we did is that we spotted, we spotted during one of our walks, an outreach walk, we spotted in one of those vernal pool, the first marble salamander larva found since 1932 in that forest, right? So, yeah, so we're also known as the eyes in the field and no, we live to that label at that moment, definitely. So that makes it even more important to want to protect this kind of forest, right? So a lot of activities around biodiversity and climate. And then in 2020, COVID hit. And in the Boston area, a lot of people were confined at home, working from home, they needed to get out. They found their forests, they found their green spaces. And in some cases, you know, we started to have an overabundance in a sense of activities in this kind of areas. Because it's great that people want to get outside. We need it absolutely, but we need to also be able to know how to be in these spaces as well. And we don't necessarily have that knowledge anymore. So anyway, we looked a little bit at the maps. We are mappers, right, as well. We map and we put everything on a map. And we found that, you know, a lot of the user trails, so this forest has about, let's say, 80 miles of regular trails. This is a forest managed by the Department of Conservation and Recreation, right? And um, supposedly, looking at past data, there was only 22 miles of non-user, you know, the, the kind of rock trail, we call them rock trail or user trails, alongside you know, the established regular trails. And we say, oh, oh, that's not true. There is much more than that, right? So... We started to map that. We wanted to change the narrative from being anecdotal, thing that, okay, we look, we perceive, but we wanted to have data on a map. We wanted to have data in tables. So we started to map, to map the rock trail, to assess somehow the width of those trails, right? We started to also create other layers such as, and of course invite all the communities to do this kind of science together. This is people driven, right? So the people are there alongside the entire cycle of the scientific process. They can jump in anywhere. They can move along that line as well, right? So because this is not coming from academic or government, so coming from the communities themselves. So we have new project, new project in terms of we establish new projects such as, okay, count the poop on the trails, the duck poop. So we are also infamously known for our duck poop layer. What? Right? That's yeah. the entire same level. Okay. <laughs> there we go, right? <laughs> then we also started to count activities. We count birds, we can count activities. You know, people on bike, people mm -hmm. on hike, hiking with dogs on leash, etc measuring those trails. And actually after two years, just looking at the trails, we found, and we have an estimate, we extrapolated what we surveyed over a quarter of the fells and still going on. And as a lower bound, we found that we have about 80 to 100 miles of user trails. So we are more than doubling all the regular trails in that forest. Something has to change, at least we need to know that. So this is interesting because we really changed the narrative here. It's not anecdotal. This is not a poop, you know, just there. This is on a map. Actually, we have a map with dynamic layer there. So we're really creating something that is actionable. 
and this is really, we're working with partners, we're working with the friends of the fells, for example. Our model is started to be replicated in other forests, you know, in the Boston area. It's only the poop app is super, it's you know. It's an entire app? It's an app, sure. yeah. Oh my gosh, you have an on site starter yet? <laughs> I, uh, no, we don't have it. We should. We have other. We, we, okay, you'll bother me with that because we can expand the model. And you know, it's, this is very, very uh, informative. You say that. You know, you can learn a lot from there, right? Yeah. And you can do science based on this kind of, kind of data as well. Right? Can you give an example of that? Actually, like, what is the now that you have all this information? What are the goals? So here, the goals is really to with all this layer that we have. So we have the vernal pool there. We have invasive, we launch an invasive, you know, a program as well, invasive flora, for example. Oh, yes. Okay. Invasive flora. So, so that we can have, when you start to layer all this data layer, when you start to accumulate them, then you can see that you have vernal pool that needs to be protected there. But what do you have? You have a bunch of rock trail coming in this area. Oh, by the way, you have really an overabundance of dog poop, right? Yeah. So <laughs> somehow it starts the conversation about starting to prioritize right where you want to take action in that forest in order to better protect it that's mm -hmm. also somehow a tool for discussing about the trail themselves the trails mm -hmm. are very old maybe with all this activity we can pinpoint and say hey, this is a very popular area there but this is rogue but this area there maybe we should redirect so that you know people can make use of that learn how to be in that space because they want to see that space so this is really a tool for discussion right yeah. so this is what we love about our project and the fact that it is people driven that is awesome. I'm so I'm so glad we came over here. I've never heard of anything like this. this great. You guys are like, I mean, you're not like this. You are this. The experts of a very like, yeah, very. It, it's funny how deep you can get into how crazy. Like, we stun. We stun yeah. some of uh, research uh, offices, right? Because I'm a data person, by the way. I'm a statistician and data person okay. as well. So. This research office, I'm not going to name the institution, we're blown, blown by what we do. So, oh my God, you are doing so much with not fancy tool per se. We're putting layers on a map. When we're, okay, we're looking at hotspot, etc. And But we don't necessarily have incredibly fancy visualization because you don't want that. You want the message to be simple. Keep it simple, right? Because this is what people rely, right? And one of my big thing is actually also democratizing science, right? Less than 20% of the American public can grasp basic science methodology. This is heartbreaking. So what you want is really to have a complete different discourse where you really lead them to understand that data is not a fearful thing, that you can do a lot, right? You can have very strong message with minimum amount of data if you know and you learn and you work together at, you know, putting the information together, right? And having a good narrative as well, yeah. right? They become experts of their own environment. Exactly. That helps. <laughs> exactly, because they are the best people somehow to protect their own space, right? How did you get into this? What did you do to, uh, to get started with this? So biodiversity and climate, I was interested okay. in counting the birds, right? Oh, cool. In those yeah. spaces, but because, so one of my specialties working on large dynamic system in mathematics. So I always had, you know, a look on systems, right? So I never just look at that bird or I never just look at that insect. I always look at everything around to see that space where yeah. the space they are in and what they need. So. That's how I started Iwa because I wanted to do something good, right, for uh, for the world and for the communities where I live, right. And this is not just there; we do other things in other areas as well, right. So, and I wanted it always has been for me very important to have a democratization element. I want people to have their tool because I believe in people power. Yeah, oh, totally! <laughs> you're in the right place for that. Truly, <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you're in the right place, and this is awesome. I'm really excited to like make you put the poop app onto SciStarter. Yeah, that'll be that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Very excited. Yeah. But Thank you. That, we have only with that. Only with that. Oh, you can bug me with anything, but oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Anything. That's why we exist. We just want to, we just want to push for all of our projects here to be included on these. So thank you so much for talking to me. It was lovely to meet you too. I'm Emma, by the way. I don't know if I should have told you my name, but hi. Emma. 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 Hi, hello. <laughs> and then apparently they had already met, but whatever. No, <laughs> didn't tell me. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Who's next? Uh, okay. I'm going to walk this way and then we're going to run into someone. Let's see. Hey, do you want to be on a live webinar briefly to talk about your project? Anybody on this call speak Spanish? Do we want to do a fully in Spanish? <laughs> an, an artist. Do you want to talk about your project too? 
All right, well then I will turn it over to, I apologize for this, Sammy. I, yes, yeah. I knew it. Okay. So, so you have to brush my hair? Yes, you gotta brush your hair, all of it. Yep, Um, I'm going to do this. So it's a little bit more on your poster. It'll try to frame towards you because my iPad's fancy and tries to be like, yeah. ooh, human. Okay, I'm gonna give you this mic. And what I'd like to know is who are you? What are you studying and why is it important? And then I'll ask you follow-up questions if it's relevant. Ah, my name is Samuel Suleiman. You can hold it or I can hold it. Ah, you can hold. It's, it's more professional. Like, uh, sure. yeah. my name is Samuel Suleiman. I'm from Puerto Rico. My NGO is Sociedad Ambiente Marino. Sociedad Ambiente Marino is a small NGO that has a several islands around our island in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. And I'm just presenting a showcase of two of those alliances, Arrecife Prociudad and Vidas. Those are alliances? Those are, yeah, they're, they're, those are NGOs that they are located in their own geographical area. Mm -hmm. and they are doing a lot of great stuff. And what is interesting, Emma, is about the, uh, their artists. Yes. They are not sick, yeah. no, I, they are not scientists. Mm -hmm. They are doing science, but they are not scientists. And yeah. they are doing it with the community. And they are protecting the resources and they're getting data and they're doing volunteer a lot of work and they are making innovation or low cost because you know uh, most of the NGO doesn't have the economical resources so they have to invent to create to develop and also include the community as protector of the of what they are doing uh, this is one of the uh, low cost method of cultivation of endangered species. This one is Agropara Palmata. They are talking uh, to other citizens, to a student, getting information, giving tours to, to kids mm -hmm. in shallow water, uh, and going to uh, legislation to create some kind of support. And it's great that these people have been protecting all the uh, the Acropola Palmatas in the north coast of Vega Baja, and they are Vida, Vega Bajeños, Impulsando el Desarrollo Autosustentable, that is Vega Bajeños, is the local name for people who live in Vega Baja. Okay. Uh, proposing the development of uh, environmental and sustainability. Nice. So, I, with the participation of all these people and all the volunteers that have been with Jose Ambiente Marino, we have presenting around the world in different uh, national and international scientific meetings. That's right where we now. are. Yeah. Yeah. Are. <laughs> ah, maybe the Besides next it. time we'll get to change the logo. The logo? You want to change the logo? Hot take. We want to change the logo of Seaside? No. Oh. Uh, they want to change the logo. Oh, they want to change it. Oh, oh, because the seaside you know? instead of citizen slash, okay, got it, okay. Yeah. That's a longer conversation. <laughs> yeah, this is, this yeah. is for our interview. Totally, yeah. But right now, we have seven persons presenting in the AMLC, Association of Marine Laboratories of Caribbean. Awesome, yeah. That has a student and people, worker from technical from Social Ambiente Marino. So we have also, with all the data that has been collected, uh, publishing okay. over 50 review in scientific journals like this one that you have been seeing. But I don't want to escape to the present of Recife Procidad. Recife is Reef Pro City. Reef Pro City. And those people start uh, trying to develop a marine uh, reserve mm -hmm. or an APA, Marine Protect Area. Oh, yeah. okay. And when they start, uh, they need to do a lot of work and we get people from our uh, student chapter, our student chapter, uh, so, uh, Capital Estudiantil Social Ambiente Marino, uh, we call SESAM, and we went to make like a bell dance to get all the data to make the justification that we, why we need to save that place. And this person that is the leader of Recife Prociedad have been doing uh, water quality monitoring, that should be done by EPA or the DNR, yeah, but the local is doing, and it's not just taking the data, it's also processing and presenting to the public. And because- Is there just no one in a formal organization doing this as well? So this is like filling a need that hasn't been in this met? Area, 
-hmm. this area is doing by them. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, and what I what they are doing uh, in another area, we are also taking monitoring water, okay. the water quality monitoring. Have they found anything? Do you know what the their like reports have shown? Uh, well, look the ones is important. Where you see this logo of uh -huh. Procida? In this area, do you know what is located? Okay? No. The Puerto Rico airport. Oh, the airport. Okay. Yeah, when you go to Puerto Rico and you don't want to go so far, mm -hmm. which beach do we visit? Mm -hmm. That same beach. Oh. So when he's getting uh, the data of Jeff what is it? Uh, no, okay. no, no. But uh, when he gets uh, data, he gets uh, also the uh, bacteriological uh, data, uh, monitoring okay. water, and also physical parameter. And he designed because he's a graphic artist. He say, "Why we don't put like a, a leverage and put something visual for the people? <laughs> you can see that is it green? You can jump to, into the water. Oh. You see too many red. Yeah, you say, okay. okay, no, because yeah. it's more easy to the people. And he make a like a graphic picture of <laughs> the front of the beach where he's taking the samples." So if so I these see are, these are available for viewing for anyone going to the beach. Yeah, yeah. You go. Uh, he's planning. Uh, he's thinking ahead. Thinking through it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to create like a QR code that ah, you go yeah, yeah. directly to his uh, to our receiver Ciudad Facebook, mm -hmm. where is the data place every week. Gotcha. Okay. So he's making the the bacteriological, making talk, uh, protecting the Isla Verde Reef. Mm -hmm. uh, Doing talk during the evening, making sand dunes. Making them? Do they have a lot yeah. of erosion? Mm -hmm. of, uh, yeah, because the erosion, uh, you don't know, you know about the Hurricane Maria that passed through Puerto Rico mm -hmm. and killed uh, almost a lot. Well, this is the area that he successfully get the MPA. Oh, okay. So in this area, he's making the P and the MPA. Group. MPA, what Marine Protect, protection? Marine Protected Area. Air, oh, gotcha. MPA. Gotcha. Yep. Yeah. So he has a, a couple of people like his age, over, over your age, <laughs> and they make like a vigilante de recife that is reef uh, gardens. Yeah. And they go around. They also has create a coloring book for the kids. Oh, I want one. Yeah. <laughs> So you have to, to go to Puerto Rico because okay. part of the uh, the sand dunes is to protect the visitor from nests. Yeah. You know, and also the big rush uh, protection to see and compare how it's affecting the water quality to the corals and mm -hmm. all the mantis, as it called, who live in that. This is very, so very can, important too. You like, can visit here. You with our QR code, should I go in really close? If anyone could possibly scan a QR code from here, maybe. I'll hold it for a couple seconds. Oh no, it's trying to go to you. Sorry, it's a, uh, no, it's going to me. <laughs> it's funny, it wants to follow humans. Yeah. It's great. Um, have, has anything or, well. It moves to me, it moves, it moves to you. To you. Isn't it, we're just like obsessing over the technology here, <laughs> as in my iPad. Um, isn't it crazy? Yeah. It's really fun. Um, reef related, have you yourself gone out there and done any like restoration or these activities with them? Or are you representing all that they have a lake? No, they, I, every one of these groups are an independent NGO. Okay. Uh, we have a collaboration. Some, yeah, of them, okay. some of them we have help in the development of their NGOs. Mm -hmm. Some of them they have their own NGO and we share together some kind of interest uh, gotcha. in the same way. But we, we try to promote not just to uh, make restoration of the, of the reef or of the dunes. Mm -hmm. We we see that we have also to, to push the movement to recreate rehabilitation. Okay. You know, you broke a, a leg, you have a cast, yeah. and you restore your, your bone, sure. and it's restored. Yes. But that not necessarily mean that you can use again. Right, yeah. I so actually do a until, lot of therapy for my wrist, until you right? rehabilitate <laughs> yeah. by other exercises mm -hmm. uh, that happen with, yeah, yeah. With, the, with the reef. Okay. And the important thing, and 
I mean, I didn't know till 2017 that I went to Minnesota CSA meeting. Oh, nice. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, it was cold and now it holds. Uh, yep. Very cold uh, Minnesota. 100 degrees here in Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is that we have been calling most of the people that uh, were around us volunteers. And they were doing like these two examples, mm -hmm. citizen side. And so, that what was for me is like a blast in the in the brain. Yeah. Is that uh, I can work with all this presentation and publication mm -hmm. with pure science and it's easy. But when you include the uh, people, the community, yeah. the non-science people, is more satisfactory. Yeah. Because you see uh, a broad result, and you see that uh, the the word I like to use is a legacy. Okay. Yeah. Because a uh, science by science, mm -hmm. still in a journal or in a book, without right. application is the is yeah. the knowledge in a book. Well, that's it, a good relation. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah, you have a knowledge into a book, and the one read it and no one apply. Mm -hmm. It's just a book. Right. It's well, not right. uh, uh, what we would like to do matter. because if we want to make change in the world, yeah. we have to start doing the stuff. Uh, as I say, maybe Tuesday in one of the meetings, in rice and beans, something edible for the people. Yeah. You need to you need to make the science not for just the scientists. Mm -hmm. You have to make the science for. For everyone. For, yeah, for yeah. everyone. And you need to put in a way that be edible to everyone mm -hmm. and can anyone get that knowledge, get that advance, that information, and make something. Uh, Do something with it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's absolutely. That's that's like why I'm why I'm part of this too. It's the idea yep. of that's when we way. bring everyone in. Are you hey. shaking? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a scientist, but I am a part You're of it because I love. Whoa. I'm not. Okay, well, that's awkward. I'm gonna go now. That's what happened with the, I don't know. I see that the, I, I have a big belly, not a big ego. So, <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry. I don't, okay, I was so, holding this near my face, so I don't know if that was heard, but okay, carry on. <laughs> so, I, I, I don't care who uh, made the publication first or not, I would like more uh, that how will we use that knowledge, yeah, uh, how can the uh exposed to more mm -hmm. people that is why it's important this term innovation of innovation of low cost cost <laughs> method because if yeah. you you can create something that anyone else can do mm -hmm. you will have resolved with more people right. we right. are a lot more people without a lot of resources than the people that just have the, the resources it takes the village, right? It works for science too. It yeah, takes a village I to make things happen. Real yeah. The, what? I you read that in real digest? Did I read that? No, it's the. It takes a village to like raise a kid or something. I don't know what the line is, but it's an idiom. I, I don't know. Leave me alone. Okay. <laughs> they have me in pass. Okay. It's a. Uh, it's yes. This is live. It's still live, right? We haven't. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. Actually, what time is it? We should check. Oh man, we're at ten minutes still. I'm gonna have to check in with other people. But this is awesome. Thank you for giving us like a lot of. White, like one liners do you have a very beautiful perspective and i'm excited for these projects happening so thank you so much awesome all right <laughs> all right moving on we got to catch marile before she exits because y'all have met her before if you were in on the um globe oh we might have lost her dang it <laughs> how'd that happen la 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 let's see um now that you're done with my la la laws. Are there some behind here? Let's see. Hey, are you representing a poster? And would you like to be on a live webinar for a moment? Uh, sure. Amazing. Sure. All right, you might be our last one because we got like a couple more minutes of this webinar before we're out of here. Um, I, my name is Emma, by the way. I'm a SciStarter starter representative, um, and I'm here for our weekly webinar that we do. And we we moved it to Thursday so we could talk about the poster session. Mm -hmm. So I want to know who you are, what on earth you're doing, 
uh, and uh, like how you got into it and what it's like accomplishing, or maybe like what's accomplishing, and then we can get into like why it matters to you. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Sure. So, uh, Would you like? Oh, by the way, this oh. is a tiny mic. I can hold it up to your face, or you can hold it yourself. Up to you. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So my name is uh, Dave Bild. Um I am at Chicago Academy of Sciences, Peggy Notabart Nature Museum. Um, I'm in the education department, and I'm here. My colleague has just went to the bathroom, but um, <laughs> our program. Um, that we're sharing about is a youth development program focused on urban ecology and environmental science called Teenagers Exploring and Explaining Nature and Science. Um, and one of the goals of the program is that teens in the program start to develop a science identity, agency, and sense of belonging. Um, and teens get paid in our program for their participation. They come from throughout Chicago. And it's kind of set up like an urban ecology environmental science field school. Um, so in our program model, um, for our six week program, teens are going through a series of different community and citizen science investigations and other investigations starting to develop their interest areas. In the final three weeks of the program, teens work in small groups based on shared interests to develop and carry out their own um, projects in a community science, open science model um, so that folk, other folks can contribute, low barrier to participation. Um, and so teens are developing projects like looking at pollinators, species, relationship to pollen of color, flower type, um, dragonfly populations, water quality, aquatic macroinvertebrates, tardigrades. Tardigrades? Eat some. I can see tardigrades? Yep. I thought yep. those things were tiny. Well, they collect and look at tardigrades. Like and so, under crazy microscopes. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can make your own microscopes look at them as well. And what? sometimes we have teens to make their own equipment as well. Uh, but teens are also like developing their own mobile data collection forms, project websites, project showcases. Um, and uh, yeah, that's kind of what we're sharing about today. That's super awesome. How did you get into this? Um, so I've been working at the Nature Museum since 2011. Um, before that, I was a middle school science teacher here in Arizona. Um, hey, yep. Where did you teach? I taught I, for uh, middle school. Oh, yes. Grade. I taught um, I taught in Glendale, Discovery Elementary. I and, taught in Maryville. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, but before that, I was an archaeologist for 10 years here in the Arizona area. Okay, so I was a career cool. changer. Um, but yeah, I ended up going back to Chicago, found the museum. We kind of just developed this program from more or less the ground up. You know, we had an existing teens program and we put in some proposals for a new type of program model. And um, it's been in existence in its current form since 2014. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of uh, how we got into it. And really like for me, um, it was a way to combine my passion for science education with my also like enjoyment of field science as well and being outdoors and looking and looking at the relationships between humans and the environment and non-human nature. So yeah, so that's what I've been. And there's my colleague, Abby, who also co the program with me. So that's a little bit about that. That is awesome. I'm going to take over yeah, for yeah. a second. I'm trying to think of other questions that like maybe, oh, right. Um, so this is a Chicago only program? Is that yeah, what it was? So you know? like the teens in my program are, yeah, they are Chicago residents, Chicago high school students. Um, and yeah, so for the teens in the program, it's specifically for Okay. So if someone wanted to be a part of it, they're a student in Chicago who looks up the website or something? Yeah, like what so is the... um, if they're in Chicago, they can either go to the naturemuseum.org mm -hmm. forward slash teens and find out nice. about the program there. Um, mm -hmm. You can also find out about it through afterschoolmatters.org, which is another place to apply through. Yeah. It's an application. So this is like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we get about 125, 130 applicants each summer, and then we do kind of an interview process and end up with 30 high school students for the summer. If anyone knows any high schoolers or teens, this seems like a really great res baby resume builder. <laughs> I don't know. I, I did an Earthwatch thing, which is a bit, like different for sure, but it like similarly brings in teens sometimes. And I'm just like, I wish I had done this as a kid and not a teacher. I did the teacher fellow one. Yeah, you know, it's it a lot of the same thing with this whole program. Yeah. It's like, I always hear like, ah, I wish this was around when I was a kid. And it's yeah. like, well, you know, you get in a position where you can start to create programs that you would want to do as a kid as well. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I got to learn about caterpillars because I've already mentioned. All right, we are nearing the end of our, let me see what time it is. Ah, yeah, we are almost good. So I'm going to head out in the hallway. Thank you so much for talking with us. Loved learning about all of that. And then we are going to head into a quieter space, I think. Let's do that. All right, we're going into the hallway. And then I'll end it. Hi, Rusty. <laughs> Seeing lots of people. My friend who I said I was going to interview disappeared. 
Oh well. Bye, Sci Star team. <laughs> oh yes, gonna do that too. <laughs> I have to leave for Mesa in like two seconds. Alrighty. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn around unless yeah, I'll just turn around for a second. Okay. Ray D. Okay. Closing it out. We don't have a slide deck, so this is just randomly like in the hallway talking to no one. Um slash <laughs> just talking to Roland, honestly. It's like we're having a conversation. This is the first time we've been in person too. This is great. Uh, okay. Anyway, um, so this is a weird side star live, but just be aware every week we'll be coming back with new ones. Next week we're talking about Ant Picnic with uh, the leader of that project. Her name is Magdalena, um, and she's in Vienna, Austria. So that'll be fun um, to learn a little bit about that. Oh, I see a chat. I didn't know I could see chats on this. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're very welcome. Um, I hope you all enjoy the rest of your days. And uh, if you didn't get a chance to see this and you're watching the recording, um, stay tuned for more every week. You can go to our blog uh, on SciStarter to then um, see <laughs> the, yes, wait, that's who I was looking for. Yes, that's who I was looking for, Cynthia. Where are you? <laughs> or where is this person? I don't think it was Cynthia though. I think it was Cameron. I don't know. I'm so sorry, Cameron. Cammy, yeah. Where did she go? <laughs> oh, you're her mother. That's right. Okay. I'm sorry. I don't know where she went though. I'm so sorry. She's waiting. Okay. You know what? We can try to figure this out. We can last long. We can do a little bit longer. <laughs> I don't know where she went though. All right. We will find her. Where are you? Cameron. I'm looking. <laughs> oh boy. No, I appreciate you doing this though because I didn't want to I'd like put her on a calendar invite and everything oh there she is you're in a corner <laughs> I found her for anyone who wants to stay on for a little while I found her <laughs> yeah sorry man <laughs> sorry. Hi. hi I like went in a circle and just completely didn't look in corners so I am so sorry but we are back and you are our final interview, so you better make it good. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, okay, for our final and last one, this is gonna be a couple of minutes to talk about turtles. We met yesterday and I was like, oh my gosh, this sounds great. I wanna interview you for this. And so now we're here. Cool. Can you explain who you are, what you study and yes. what you're sharing with the world today? Yeah. You can either hold it or I can. It's up to you. <laughs> this is a cool tiny <laughs> microphone. <laughs> Uh, my name is Cameron Allen. I work for NOAA Fisheries at Pacific Islands Fisheries Science Center. I'm based in Honolulu. This project is for Hawaiian green sea turtles, also known as Honu, and we're asking the public to help us count the turtles with white shell etches. The shell etches are temporary. They're put on with a Dremel, the same thing you would get acrylic nails taken off with. Their shell is keratin like our fingernails. So it grows just like our fingernails do. So it's temporary in nature. And if the turtle is bigger and not growing as fast, it stays a little longer, like a year. If the turtle is smaller, growing faster, it stays a little less time. Yeah. Uh, what's the weirdest thing you know about turtles? <laughs> that you found out about turtles? How weird are they? I've heard they're pretty weird. Well, they're reptiles, right? So they're very unique compared to mammals. My favorite thing to let people know about turtles is that they have a nose and it's squishy like a dog's. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's pretty pretty fun fact about turtles. So the rest of them is leathery, but their nose is quite squishy like a dog. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. How did you get into this work? Oh, fortuitously. Um, <laughs> so I'm a reproductive biologist by training. I am not a marine biologist. I happened to finish my PhD, but I didn't have the skill set I needed to get into conservation jobs. So I went to community college to learn how to make maps using data about where animals were. In that class, I sat next to a person who worked for NOAA, and she put me in contact with two people who I ended up working for. Okay, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh -huh. Okay, what are you hoping this project will accomplish by its, its end point? So this project has already given us some really valuable data. So the public has given us information about habitats around the main Hawaiian islands that are very important for turtles. That data has been used in the critical habitat designation for green sea turtles that will come out in the federal register later this year, meaning that government can't use that habitat to do anything nasty to it. Yeah. Um, we launched earlier this year a new website 
and an online survey form using ArcGIS123. And they can put on a map a pin of where they're seeing the turtles with these shell etches and submit a photo. So it's a much better, more efficient way for the public to get us the data. And it's more accurate. What I've learned from this conference is that I want and need to get the data public facing. So that's coming soon. We will make that happen. Yeah. Also, public facing as in like sharing like the like public pictures. Yeah, so we'll put the data out so that the public can interact with it. For example, field scope has a really good way for us to have the public map the data, look at their data, just investigate it in different ways. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. This is great. What's next for you? Is this just a continuing like continuing on indefinitely or well this project was heavily led by an undergraduate student named Brittany Clemens at the University of Hawaii Manoa. Brittany will unfortunately graduate yeah. this fall. So I'm hoping that we can partner with some local high school students okay. and get them involved in this project and help us get that data public facing. Oh, um, otherwise, sea turtles have scales on their face that are unique to the, each individual. So we can identify the turtles by facial recognition. It's another project. <laughs> yeah, it's Sorry, another <laughs> project we wanna work on to get uh, the data to the public so they can help us start matching turtles with photos that we have and we can uniquely identify turtles and figure out how many of them we have in our population. I would love to do a project in which I'm literally looking at images of faces with names of turtles and be like, <laughs> yeah, that's really Bob. That's yeah. totally Sam Dole. That's, that's yeah. I couldn't think of any other names. Here. Um, a lot of the turtles have Hawaiian names. Yeah. That makes way more sense. Um, okay, that's, that's yeah. Better. One of my favorites is Ho'omaka, New Beginnings. Um, there's another one, Famous Turtle. You can Google her name or search it on any engine you want. Punahele, which means favorite. And there's a really cool story about Punahele on the internet. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for talking to us. Sure. This is great. I'm sorry it took me so long to find you. I'm not sure. How we walked by like three times, I swear. I'm sorry. Thank you, Cynthia, for telling me. You got to go find her. And I'm like, yes, okay, I will. I'm sorry. <laughs> FYI, Cynthia's my mother. I knew. I was like, you're her mother, aren't you? <laughs> Send her the link of the live. I'm like, all right, let's see how this goes. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> all right, so we are going to close out by walking calmly and then saying goodbye in the hallway again. Um, but again, our site starter like, uh, page has a bajillion, bajillion resources that you've seen in previous uh, slides. I don't have a slide deck for you today because we are pretty mobile, but um, if you go on to SciStarter.org, um, you can find all the resources there, and you can email us at info at SciStarter.org if you have something interesting to share with us. Thanks, Cynthia. <laughs> Appreciate it. Awesome. Goodbye, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks for staying in. Bye. Unless I need to check the chat. Let's see. Oh, good. Okay. Awesome. And then we'll end the, bye. Oh yeah. It's, this is my computer too. <laughs> All right. We're going to bye Facebook. See you later. Stop. And then by recording.